Hi, and welcome to my tutorials on Euclid's Elements, Book 6. This video presentation is going to be Proposition 19 of Book 6. Now, in this proposition, we refer to duplicate ratio. So before we begin on the proposition, I would like to go over what the definition is of duplicate ratio and what it actually means. So the definition is very clear if A is to B, if the ratio of A to B equals the ratio of B to C, then A to C is the duplicate ratio of A to B. So again, A to B is equal to B to C, just a proportion. Then the extremes A to C is a duplicate ratio of A to B. All right, that's the definition, but what does it actually mean? Well, first, let's look at some examples. We have the ratio of 4 to 6 and the ratio of 6 to 9. They're both equal to 2 to 3. So according to the definition, 4 to 9 is a duplicate ratio of 4 to 6. But of course, 4 to 6 is just 2 to 3. So 4 ninths is a duplicate ratio of 2 to 3. And you'll notice that 4 is a square of 2 and 9 is a square of 3. Let's look at another example. 4 to 10 is equal to 10 to 25. They're both the ratio of 2 to 5. So again, according to the definition of duplicate ratio, 44 to 25 is the duplicate ratio of 4 to 10. But again, 4 to 10 is just 2 to 5. So 4 to 25 is the duplicate ratio of 2 to 5. And again, 4 is the square of 2, and 25 is the square of 5. So essentially, I think of duplicate ratio as the square of the ratio. So let's just look at it in fractions because many people are more comfortable with fractions. So if we have a to b is equal to b to c, which is essentially a fractional relationship that is similar to this ratio relationship. So if a to b is equal to b to c, what does a to c equal? We'll take a to b and b c and multiply both sides of the equation times a of b. So we're just multiplying both sides of the equation of a to b. And of course, this becomes a times a over b times b. Here we cross out b because it's on the bottom and top of the numerator. And we're left with 1 over c times a over 1. And this again reduces to a squared over b squared equals ac. So by definition, if we're talking fractions, if we have this relationship, a to c will be equal to the square of a over b. Um, Euclid did not write uh, duplicate ratios this way, but I will write them this way uh, for the rest of my videos. So if we have a is to b is equals b to c, then a to c is the duplicate ratio, in other words, the square of the ratio of a to b. Euclid didn't write it this way, but henceforth I will be writing it this way. I find it easier to follow along as to what's actually happening. So that is the definition of duplicate ratio. So carrying on, let's look at what this proposition actually is. What Euclid is stating is if we have two similar triangles, so the angles are all equal and the sides are all equally proportional. So A to B is to D to E and it's equal to B to C is to E to F and so on and so forth. If we have two similar triangles, then the ratio of the areas of the triangles is equal to the ratio of the squares of the sides. So let's look how he proves this. All right, we're starting with our two similar triangles. Now, if you recall from um, Proposition 11 of Book 6, it is possible to make a third proportional such that BC is to EF as EF is to BG. And if you've forgotten how to do it, I just recommend you quickly watch the video. It's pretty straightforward. So now we have, again, 
the whole of BC to EF is equal to EF to BG. And now we draw a line from A to G. All right, so we have two similar triangles. And because we have two similar triangles, AB to BC is equal to DE to EF, because there are the lines about a common angle. And alternatively, which basically means um, readjusting the way we look at these ratios, and we can do this according to Proposition 16 of Book 5, we can also say that AB to DE is equal to BC to EF. All right, so, so far we are only talking about the proportionality of the sides when we have two similar figures. Now, AB to DE is equal to EF to BG because, here just a moment, here we had BC to EF, and here we had BC to EF, and sees these are the same thing. That implies that AB to DE is equal to EF to BG, and that's what I've written here. So we have AB to DE is equal to EF to BG. AB to DE, EF to BG. Well, if we're looking at ABG as a triangle, this relationship here basically is saying that the sides about a common angle are reciprocally proportional. Let's just be careful here. So AB is to DE as EF is to BG. So that's reciprocally proportional. So according to Proposition 15 of this book, if you have two triangles whose sides are reciprocally proportional around a common angle, then the areas of these two triangles are equal. So ABG, the area of ABG, is equal to the area of DEF. Now we have BC to EF is equal to EF to BG. So according to our duplicate ratios, BC to BG is equal to BC to EF, the duplicate ratio, which is BC to EF all squared. So BC to BG is equal to the duplicate ratio of BC to EF all squared. That was the actual definition. Now, we have triangles ABC and triangles ABG. So we have two triangles. ABC is the whole of the triangle, and ABG is just this pink part. Well, according to Proposition 1 of Book 6, the areas of these two triangles will be proportional to the, air, to the ratio of their bases. So again, the area of ABG compared to the area of ABG will be proportional to the ratio of their bases. So we get the area of the whole triangle to the area of ABG is equal to BC to BG. Well, BC to BG is the duplicate ratio of BC to EF. We've already shown that, so we can just put that in there right away. So ABC, A, sorry, my mouse is not moving properly. ABC to ABG is equal to ABC to DEF because ABG and DEF are equal. These two guys are equal, so we can substitute them in this part of the equation. So now we have ABC to DEF is equal to the duplicate ratio of BC to EF. So 
So finally, after all of that, we have two similar triangles, and we have shown that the area of ABC compared to the area of DEF is equal to the duplicate ratio of BC to EF. And that is the conclusion of the proof. However, we still have what is called a porism, which is something that is sort of falls out of this. So the porism works like this. If we have three straight lines and the ratio of them A to B is equal to B to C, then if we draw two similar figures on A and B, then the ratio of A to B will be equal to the ratio of A to C. And you can see how that falls from this original proposition is because if A is to B is B is to C, then the duplicate ratio A to C, or sorry, the ratio A to C will be equal to the duplicate ratio of A to B. And the duplicate ratio of A to B is equal to the ratio of the areas. So this is how that porism falls from the original proposition. And that's it for this proposition.